Okay, thank you. Yeah, I'm John Sopungoloch and I am uh, talking here in from Uganda. <clears throat> so I'm going to sharing, I'm going to be sharing how we are preparing as uh, law field uh, as uh, LMICs and uh, specifically Africa, how we are preparing for the to embrace the law field MRI technology. And uh, just to start, I'd want to say that uh, I don't have any interest to declare. But uh, when MRI started, uh, it started well on, on, on our side, for instance. Uh, it started at low field, and I would uh, suppose that it was relatively inexpensive. But it went very quickly to a state of the art technology where uh, many of us couldn't have a stake. So that shift from the low field to high field also determined the market and uh, regions where you could probably uh, have MR systems. So the systems of course improved in the technology and also the imaging, but at a cost which was relatively very high. My first MRI scan had a bill of about $2,600. I was lucky not to pay all this money, but still, it is seemed a lot uh, for an MRI an MRI scan. So this is an amount that is uh, very unaffordable to many of uh, people residing in regions like I do. Uh, and the requirements for high field MRI also are high. The equipment itself uh, is quite expensive and the technology that is required to make it is also a challenge. The facilities that you need to have these MR systems are not available in many areas uh, like mind. Uh, even as I do this presentation now, I keep on praying that power doesn't go away and my internet connectivity disappears. So these are the challenges that we struggle with on a daily basis. The maintenance of these systems is quite high. We don't have technical personnel that reside in areas such as mine. So if you have a challenge with your MR device, somebody has to fly in from somewhere to help you fix the system. So as a result, you can imagine as uh, the first speaker was showing uh, a few minutes back, that there are not many of these devices uh, around the continent of Africa. Some countries don't have units at all. We are lucky here in Uganda that we have about 12 units at the moment in the country, but even the 12 are located within the capital city. So from whichever side of the country where you are, if you need an MR scan, you have to find your way to the capital city in order to get that scan. So you see that many of the populations are precluded uh, from having an MR scan. And at the same time, while we don't have the technology to do the scans, we are in uh, dire need of the technology actually. So we can't afford it, but we tend to need it probably more than uh, main, uh, even the rest of the developing the developed countries. Uh, we have a very high burden of non-communicable diseases. Yes. And, uh, and uh, we have lots of conditions that would require us to have an MR scan, including conditions like this, for instance, hydrocephalus, where uh, which affects so many children in ev every year across the sub Saharan Africa, and the burden for these diseases like these are quite very high. If you have a child like this, probably another child has to remain home and not go to school to take care of this one. So the burden is not only with this one, but even the siblings that will take care of it, the mother that might not be able to do any other thing other than take care of the baby. So you see that the whole family can be crippled because of one child that has a condition uh, that could be imaged relatively using uh, low uh, resolution images like the low field MRI and could get uh, assistance. So uh, we also have lots of uh, motor accidents now. Uh, this is turning out to be our new malaria of the century. Um, this is now killing lots of people across the African continent and lots of trauma is generated from this kind of accident. And again, 
there are no imaging facilities to do these kind of things. So we think that the low field MR technologies that are coming up, especially that are inexpensive and can allow point of care imaging, for instance, in the wards where patients are, we think is a very good technology for us. So we are happy to see some of these uh, low field devices pop up and uh, the portability and the flexibility with which it comes makes it makes us uh, very happy that uh, we want to try and prepare to receive uh, these technologies and also be part of the development of some of these these technologies. So how are we preparing? For instance, uh, again, the first and the second speakers also talked about camera. So uh, one of our initiatives was to form a platform where we can invite uh, experienced people and, and foster collaboration across not only Africa, but across, across the globe to benefit from uh, the expertise that we don't have at the, at the, uh, in the continent, for instance, uh, at the moment. So the camera initiative was formed in 2019, as uh, the first speaker talked about. And uh, you can see he has presented a lot of work that has come out of the camera initiative. So this is all in preparation to say that what can we do in terms of MR, how can we embrace it and how can we be part of the solution to MR imaging. Other initiatives include, for instance, the CZI funded uh, uh, Smart Africa Research Initiative that is doing mentorship and also conducting workshops across Africa. We have conducted two workshops now. The first one was in Uganda in 2022. The second one was not uh, so far away uh, recently in uh, September, we had another workshop also organized by the CZI initiative in Ghana. And the next one will be in Tanzania in, in 2024. So we are trying to rally people together and also mentor uh, a number of uh, colleagues and junior researchers and uh, technologists that can be part of the MR initiative. We are also trying to develop capacity for local fabrication of the systems. We have been privileged that Dr. Andrew Webb, that I think many of you could be knowing, and um, with his uh, colleague now, I would say, uh, Tom O'Reilly, who is also going to speak, I think, uh, at one of these uh, uh, times on this uh, technology, and supported also by Dr. Stephen Schiff from, from Yale, have been training us on how to build our own systems. How can you build your own MR system? And we think that these are initiatives that are good for us because if we can build them, then we develop capacity to use them well and also to maintain them in, in a way that is sustainable. So these are some of the initiatives uh, that are going on. And of course, also benefiting from the broader MR community uh, one community, uh, the African chapter of the ISMRM was formed last year. Uh, was it last year? It was this year. It was this year in May when we had the, the ISMRM conference in, in Toronto. That is when the African chapter was formed. So again, this is helping us to rally a number of uh, people that have expertise in MR research and to hold our hands and say, can we move together? Can we develop these technologies together? And again, also the African chapter of the ISMRM has also held its first um, inaugural conference, which was also held in Ghana in, in September of this year. And we are combining MRI workshops and fun. And I think some of you can recognize some of the faces on the screen as they do the conference, do presentations. We say there should also be fun associated with it. Uh, some of the things that drive us away from school is that the school is boring. So we think that if we include fun in our conferences, maybe this will keep people coming back. And I invite you for our next conference, which is going to be in Tanzania, and it is going to be more fun again. So prepare to join us uh, in Tanzania in September, 2024. Uh, but we are, doing this to avoid the mistake that we are already facing with some of the technologies that we have. That uh, a number of healthcare technologies are coming to us 
And uh, we don't have the expertise to use them well. We don't have uh, the expertise to maintain them. So many of them uh, end up uh, getting spoiled. And um, if you, uh, uh, during the COVID, we have been lucky to receive a, a host of donations of medical equipment, especially uh, associated with the respiratory um, uh, infections. And uh, up to now, many of these devices have not even been installed and COVID is now gone. So we are trying to prepare that as these MRs are being developed, can we try to position ourselves that we avoid a situation where you get a, a device and then three months down the road, you can no longer use the device. You don't have expertise to use it. You can't fix it. You can't do anything. So this is the situation we are trying to avoid with all the initiatives that we are starting up. And we are still ramping up more initiatives to make sure that uh, we are prepared for the technology because I am confident that the technologies are coming and they will be beneficial to us and they will be probably in the price range that we can also afford rather than relying on donations. But even if they are donated, can we make the people who have donated them uh, proud of their donations that we can avoid putting them in junkyards like this. So uh, some of the requirements that we think we need for sustainability are of course developing the local expertise through training and uh, developing manufacturing capacity so that we can make, if not the technology, uh, all of it, we can make some components of it. So that if it is broken, we can say, oh, this is a component that we have experience in making and we can make them. We are also getting involved, of course, in uh, making the MR device also, devices also, but the flexibility of the infrastructure requirements for it, in terms of energy, for instance, uh, computing power, uh, internet, and all that kind of thing. So we think that uh, these are very good uh, requirements that we need to look into before we even adopt these technologies. Uh, a reduction of the technical complexity of the technology. So we try to work with the, some of the scientists developing these technologies and say, can you make it less complex? Can you make it a little bit straightforward that uh, if it fails, we can be able to troubleshoot and tell what has caused it to fail. And of course, we are also trying to talk to our clinical colleagues. Uh, many of these uh, low field technologies are considered to have a uh, low resolution, for instance. And many of our senior clinical colleagues like the radiologists have trained in places where they know what the best systems look like. They know what the best machines look like. So they will always strive for the best. But we are trying to talk to them and say, hey, we know that you wish to have the best system, the best image before you, but the reality is this, can we afford uh, the best images? So we are bringing our clinical colleagues on board. And of course, we are talking to our governments as well to develop standards, relax some of the standards, because at the moment, even when we build some of these devices, countries might ask you to have a CE mark on it. And you say, no, I have developed this from Uganda. I might not be able to get a CE mark for it here in Uganda, but it works, it is safe, it is good. So can we work together to, to develop this system? So we need also some help from our own government. And sometimes the people who are positioned well enough to talk to our government are not us. It is also, again, sometimes the people who give us some of the support that the governments use. Those, and that includes some of you who might be listening to us here. If you come and talk to our minister, they take your word more than mine if I talk to them. So again, we still come back to you for some of the advocacy support. So, uh, we want to work together with everyone that is available that can help us to develop the MR that we need and to democratize MRI access in Africa, for instance, and also the rest of the low and middle income countries. Thank you so much for your attention and I will be available for questions. Thank you.